This is Tim Waters, host of The Backstory. As a volunteer for Longmont Public Media, I have the good fortune of uh, inviting people together to tell stories about what's going on in Longmont that you might not otherwise get to hear. So the backstory is kind of the story behind the story. And in this case, the story that we're going to tell behind the story is about the, the 529 Jump Program, a new initiative in Longmont uh, that is not unique in the world, but it's pretty special here. And joining me today are the principals in making this happen. Uh, Bonnie Finley, just around my screen, Bonnie Finley has uh, served two terms on Longmont City Council. Uh, she's, she's got a big profile and, and, and resume with the State Chamber of Commerce. She's still very much involved with what's going on in Longmont, not just this program, but the Veterans Community Project. So, Bonnie, uh, thanks for your time today. And thanks for all the things you do in the community and what you've done, your history of contributions to the community. Jenny Diaz-Leon, Jenny uh, works in, our, in the Longmont Community Services Department Division of Youth and Families. Is that fair, right? Um, so Jenny has a chance to, to program and deliver uh, all kinds of programs and services through the city of Longmont and uh, is gonna bring a particular perspective, right, uh, today on this program. This is really a partnership between the city, uh, the, the College Invest program, and the Education Foundation. So from the College Invest program is Brennan Hannon, a business development manager, and has been at the table around this conversation from day one. And um, is Bonnie's going to talk, talk about where it got started. Uh, Jenny's going to talk about what it means. Uh, uh, Brennan's going to talk about what it is. And then Josh Atherton is going to talk about how it works. And Josh is the executive director of the St. Vrain Valley Education Foundation. So at, at the end of the day, for parents and teachers and others who want to dial up or log in and learn more about this, Josh in the foundation, he's the guy and they're the place, right? Uh, that'll be the, uh, the source of information and the kind of the operational heart and soul of, of this as it moves forward. So that's the introduction. Let's get started. Bonnie, uh, you, as a member of city council, uh, played a huge leadership role in this to get it started. You've continued to stay with it. Talk about where this came from. Why would a city council care about or be interested in, and then have that interest manifest this way, kids who are ages zero to five, in this case, kids who are five and in kindergarten? Where did this come from? Why, is the city, why was the city council interested? The city council, and I believe it was 2019, sat around and thought, what do we want to be? What do we want to be known for? What do we want to look like in the future? And one of the things that we really wanted to focus on was being the best place for children to grow up in. And uh, we talked about how we value our children and, and what that meant. And it went on to, okay, how can we make sure that every child in Longmont feels valued and has opportunities that uh, perhaps they don't have now. And one of those ideas was to uh, let them know, first of all, that we believed in them, that we believed they could be successful here in Longmont. And we would give them $50 if they started a, an account for post-secondary education. Those accounts are called 529 accounts. Uh, not everyone knows what that means, but it's actually, it's a college invest account and um, it doesn't have to be used for college. It can be used for any kind of post-secondary education. And really it, kids who have those kind of accounts are seven times more likely to go on to post-secondary education, which means they're more likely to graduate from, from high school. Uh, if kids know that people believe in them, they'll believe in themselves. And so uh, we started our committee to, to make sure that we could make that happen. Uh, City Council, once we had our committee and had our, our idea, um, City Council did provide money for us to begin the program. And um, <laughs> if, if it hadn't been for COVID, we would have been wildly successful by now, I'm sure. But we have had some success and we look forward to more success in the future. So uh, this is a city saying to five-year-olds, we have confidence in you and we're investing in your future. Uh, that's pretty powerful. Well, and it's, and it's true. And I, um, 
I was born here in Longmont and my kids were born here in Longmont. And the difference between uh, me and my children, quite frankly, um, we were both brought up to believe that we would go on to college. So it just didn't even occur to us not to finish high school or not to do well in school because we knew that we would go on. Uh, I had friends and my children had friends in the same exact socioeconomic group whose parents didn't go to high school or their their parents didn't go to college and and they were they just didn't have that expectation and i really believe that if you have that expectation you're more likely to fulfill it so that's where it started brennan i'm going to ask you to pick it up with what is it right when we talk about 529 and that, that and, and you made one of you one of you i want to talk about where did the jump come from with 29? Um, but that's where it started. What is it? What should what should anybody know who doesn't already have a 529 account? What should they know from, from you and College of Vest about what it is? And then you can talk about uh, all the benefits and how to make it happen. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. So A 529 is a simple account. Uh, you know, it really is a tax advantaged way for parents to put away money or grandparents. A lot of times it's grandparents to set money aside. It grows tax free. And then when you take the money out, it's a tax free withdrawal to help you know, offset the cost of higher education. Now, we know the cost of higher education continues to increase. Um, and that's why we have in Colorado a program called College Invest. Uh, we administer the Colorado 529. There's four different accounts you can open. Uh, we're a not-for-profit. We report up to the Department of Higher Education. And that's why this particular partnership with this Community Education Foundation is so important for us because it, it hits really close to home. This is part of our mission is to get Coloradans in a much better spot. So when kids graduate from, from college, they're actually able to buy homes and have families and start their life because they're not burdened with student debt. So that's part of the mission, right? Part of our vision. Uh, and what we know is Bonnie had actually talked about this for a minute is kids the state of Nevada did a, did a research study on this, and they found that kids were seven times more likely to go off to college if they had a 529 and they were told about it. And that's whether there was $200 in the 529 or $20,000, that's seven times more likely still applied. So socioeconomic status doesn't matter in this equation. Those statistics still remain the same. Uh, what we also know is a bachelor's degree or some type of higher education is still very valuable in the marketplace. As a matter of fact, high school degrees are losing value in the marketplace. People that have only a high school degree are starting to see salary decreases uh, when, you know, when they go out into the job market. Uh, millennials is, is the most recent generation we have statistics on for would they benefit? And those with a higher education on average make about $17,000 each year from having that type of higher education. So it's important, uh, we know that. People have better health outcomes. People live longer. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy how much this higher education makes a difference. Uh, so let us help you help the children, right? Let us, let us help you in conjunction with the Longmont City Council and the St. Vrain Education Foundation, make this a reality for you and your family as well. No, that's great. Um, uh... I, I'm going to ask you, this is, in, I'm going to surprise you with this question, and I promised you I wouldn't surprise you, but even, even a gross estimate, if we put $50 into account, and it stays there as a five-year-old until they're 18, or graduated from high school, over that 13-year period of time, is there just a rough estimate of what that might accrue to, right, with interest, if there was never another dollar deposited to that account? I don't actually know what $50 turns into, but I can kind of figure it out because on average, your money doubles every, uh, every, every 10 years, right? If you put money in. So in 20 years, that would be you know, $200, right? So if that was a never another dime, what I can tell you is if you put 200 bucks a month into one of these accounts, um, you'll have at least enough to cover 30, at least 33% of a college education. So that's gonna give you on average about $100,000 to spend on a college education. So, and you can do the math backwards from there a little bit, but that gives people an idea of what does it look like? How much do I have to save? I think the most important piece is opening an account, getting the $50 in, 
you can have family contribute. You can have friends contribute. You can have a neighbor who likes your child contribute. So everybody can help. I know with my account, my dad puts money into the accounts I have for the nieces and nephews, and it's really helped us grow their education fund. So even if you might not personally be able to fund what you consider as a lot of money, it might help to have, it takes a village, right? So it might help to have friends and family to contribute as well. So the, so the city contributes $50, no strings attached to that for five-year-olds when they're in kindergarten. And, and that $50 it actually is way more than $50. It's a much bigger contribution because it grows. Mm -hmm. And every Christmas, every birthday, every holiday, Easter, all those times in the year, when there is gifting, this would, be, this would make it easy to gift today that turns into a much bigger gift when some a child graduates from high school and continues their education after high school. Is that the picture? Oh yeah, for sure. I, I, I did this for my nieces. My dad now automated his contributions. He puts money in every two weeks, which is wonderful. And we did very small amounts. I, you know, every new baby in the family, I open a 529. And they agree to put 25 bucks a month in, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when everybody's having babies, it adds up quick. Um, so, you know, I put $25 a month into every kid's account. So the seven-year-old, I think we have like $4,000 in her account. And that's still going to, she's going to probably end up with 30 grand. And we've just been trickling money in there. So um, with, any, with any kind of effort, you could actually have a much better result than we will. But we're still going to be very happy with what we'll have to help contribute to that fund for them. And it, and it doesn't have to be a bachelor's degree somebody's pursuing. Uh, any, any life preparation, job preparation, community college, vocational training is all, is all legitimate use of those funds. Yes? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I've helped kids. I helped a young man in Colorado Springs go to auto mechanic school. I helped a, a young woman go to the Paul Mitchell College of Hair Design in Colorado Springs. I even helped a grandparent become a ski instructor. Um, and he used a 529 in his retirement um, to follow one of his dreams, right? So it is pretty flexible. And you can, I think one of the most important parts to remember is, because the biggest question we get is, what if my child doesn't go on for higher education? Well, you can pass it to another kid. Right, you can use it for your own education, higher education. Um, you can use it for so many different things that it's very flexible. It leaves families with lots of options, so that money's not held hostage somewhere. Right. So we know where it came from. Uh, we know what the it is here. We ought to learn a little bit what, about what it means. So, Jenny, you're the voice now of multiple generations in this conversation, right? Uh, you represent a span. Uh, so, so you 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 work every day with kids in this community and with their families. Um, based on your experience of working with our kids, what do you think, what do you think this means to them? And, and, and I'll follow up with another question after we get a chance to listen. Yeah, thank you for that. So uh, something that I wanted to say is that we do have a program here at the Youth Center called Aspire, where we work with first-generation students on their pathway to higher education. And so to think um, along with myself and, and them, if, if if they would have been able to start a program like this when they were five years old, um, they would have already had a little seed of money that could have could have been supporting them uh, on top of maybe scholarships or on top of other other financial support, but they would have already had a start. And that's what we really want to get our families to do is get a start. Uh, I know that for for families like myself, um, it might be challenging to put extra money on there, especially if we're trying to pay rent or we're trying to um, take care of everybody in the family or, or support extended family. But even, even $5, $10, that, that money over time adds up. And Again, I want to uh, I want to really uh, really make a strong point that it's the start that matters, right? And over time, if you think about it, in those in those um, what did you say it was about thirteen years or eighteen years um, that 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 that'll accrue, it's it's going to make a big difference. Um, whether it covers your books, whether it covers part of your housing fee, uh, that's all important. That's all part of of the things that we don't think about a lot when we think about higher education and. And every little bit of money uh, supports you get to get to the goals that you have. That's one of the things that uh, we hear from a lot of our students, actually. Uh, Jenny, I know you've been in this community since you were a very young child. Uh, what would it have meant to you, right? When, when you're a five-year-old, if somebody had said, Jenny, we have so much confidence in you 
that you're going to finish high school and go on, what would that have meant? Do you, I mean, it's, I know it's hard to think back when we, any of us were five, uh, but what kind of a statement does that mean to a five-year-old, you think? I think um, to me, uh, like Bonnie, I actually heard myself, you know, you're going to go to college and this is part of what's going to be in your future. But the question was always like, how are we going to pay for it? Right. And how are we going to make that a reality? And by the city investing um, this money to each student, it's, they say, to me, it sounds like I have somebody else on my team and I have somebody else that I can look to for support. And that is really important, especially, like I said, with my experience as a first generation student, we don't really know the ropes. We don't really know um, a lot of the resources. That's part of why we created that program, uh, Aspire. And it's just one more way that, um, that you have a step up. Uh, and one more way that you're gonna, you're gonna start thinking about and preparing at the age of five. Right. If I, I think that um, in school we hear about college, but it seems like, oh, it's so far away. I don't have to think about it now. Then you get to middle school and it's like, eh, it's so really far away. And then all of a sudden it's your your senior year of high school and you're like, what am I going to do next? Right. If you start talking yeah. and having those conversations at, at the age of five, that completely changes your trajectory. And it, it just keeps every year you keep learning more and you keep getting further ahead than some of the people that um, might not have the resources to be able to, to start having those conversations. So it, it makes quite a difference to, to start that, that young. Yeah. The power of self-image and a vision for oneself, right? That combination. Mm -hmm. And that somebody it, it has the confidence in you that you're going to get it done. So we've heard where it came from, what it is, why it's important. Josh, we need to learn how it works. Uh, so you were willing to step up and put the foundation kind of in the center of this to, to work with the city, to work with College Invest, uh, uh, to make it operational. Talk about what that means. What should parents know, teachers know, uh, uh, philanthropists know who, are, who will watch this and, and wonder, how do I contribute to this, right? How does this become the object of my fundraising effort, right, this year for, you know, whatever the philanthropic group might be? educate us? Well, I think what they should know is that there are stakeholders across the city who really, really care about investing in our, in our students and our youth here in our local communities. And when Bonnie approached me about this idea, uh, you know, I, I just thought about our mission at the foundation here at St. Brian Valley Schools Education Foundation. Our, and our mission, just to be very easy, is student success, teacher excellence. And when you're thinking about student success, it goes beyond just K-12. It's you know, locally here, we work really, really hard with St. Fernand Valley Schools, who's a great school district. We have great administration, great teachers, great schools. And when they move that tassel on their cap from one side to the other and they step across that stage, it doesn't mean we just wave them goodbye and, and, and wish the best. We really want them to be set up for success going to the future and making sure that they have financial um, help to do that, I think is really, really important. And so when Bonnie approached me to do this, and you know, I talked to our board, we were excited about it because the city is really putting up the funds for this. And as a foundation, we're gonna be kind of linked between the community, uh, the school district, our teachers, our parents, and just try to help move this forward. And so if, if one of our uh, parents here locally or teachers or um, someone mentioned grandparents, if you wanna do this, it's, it's really easy. And I would say probably the best way to do it is just go to 529jump.org. Uh, that actually takes you to our foundation website, and we've set the website up just to try to answer a lot of questions that our parents here locally in St. Brain could have about what we're doing here locally with the city of Longmont, with um, the, the, the city staff and, and the council, and, and then go beyond that, the next step after that, once you decide, hey, my, my student is a kindergartner, and this is something I really would like to do, I'd like to get this $50 is you can go from our website to collegeinvest.org. We have a link on our website or you can go directly to collegeinvest.org and you go there and you select the plan that you wanna do. And, and I will say, Tim, um, before I, I really committed to anything, I talked to Brendan, I talked to Bonnie, I myself went up and had set up a 529 plan through College Invest. My wife and I had set up one years ago for our kids, but I wanted to see how easy it was. Uh, within 10 minutes, I had set up the plan with College Invest uh, we had selected direct portfolio, which I think is pretty common uh, with most people. And I have it set up just taking uh, money out of our uh, bank account to fund that. And we've linked up with grandparents, aunts and uncles who want to do a birthday uh, present to our, our children. And you just, you get a code from the system, you give them the code, they click on the link, put the code in, links them up with the account, they can make the deposit. 
and, and it's done. And it's it's a great um, tax advantage for them too. And, and I'm not a tax expert. Of course, I always say, talk to your tax professionals first and foremost about any information you want on that. Uh, but we're trying to make it super, super easy. And um, once you do that, then what you can do is go back to our website, 529jump.org. And there's a form on there and the form is very easy. All we ask is your name. We ask what your account number is with College Invest. That's really important so we can link up the money and then what school your students at. And what, what we do is since we get that information within about four to six weeks, uh, we will actually send that payment over to College Invest and they'll put it in the student's account. So um, it, it is as easy. First of all, there's no other identifiers here. Does somebody have to have nope. a social security card to do this? Nope. And if they don't have a bank account, uh, money in a checking account, is that is that essential? Um, I, I don't know. It's probably a question for Brennan. Um, I'll, I'll maybe put that over to Brennan. Is that essential, Brennan? Um, so, uh, you do need, you don't need a bank account. You just need to fund it somehow, right? So maybe you put $10 in it. Maybe you put $15 in it, whatever it may be. Um, I think the minimum to open is $25, but remember Longmont's going to make that $50. We're, we're, yes. yeah. They're going to make that minimum for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, what it, it is, you, as an account owner, you do need to have a social security number or a TIN or something like that to identify yourself when you apply for an account. Um, so, so that is important. I wanted to, if it's okay, Tim, to mention two other things that I missed that I think will be important to people. And one of those is we have a scholarship program. So let's say you've been saving in your 529, you have a kid that starts to go off to school. At that point, you'd apply for a scholarship and the scholarship right now is up to $2,000 a year. So that could be an extra $8,000. Now you have to have had a 529 to do that. And there's a minimum balance, but I think it's like $2,000. So it's pretty attainable because remember, if you've had 18 years to save, you know, hopefully you could meet that minimum balance. Um, but there's also a matching grant. And that one is you put in $500 one year, we'll also put in $500. So those are two programs we have to help the community. Now you're in Longmont, you're very lucky that you have uh, the community foundation here that's doing this. So why not complement with that with some of the other programs available as well and, and just boost your savings there. So back to Josh, if, if, I, if I'm a parent or a grandparent and, I, and I'm, I'm not certain what to do, I'm not real comfortable with, the, with uh, working with the internet, and can I call the foundation? Can I get some help that way? Yep, you can call the foundation. All of our information is on our website. And, and I would also say, too, if, if you're having difficulties with your bank account, um, Elevations Credit Union is, is a great partner, not only with our foundation here locally, but with a lot of nonprofits in the area. And Michelle Sulik, who is a community manager with them, has agreed that um, anyone can reach out to Elevations Credit Union, let them know that you're setting up a 529 plan and that you would like to get assistance. Um, they do have folks there who speak Spanish, and so that shouldn't be a difficulty at all. Um, and I would say, too, I know um, College Invest side, due to because they're working with financial institutions, they need that Social Security number and, or, and or TIN number. We do not need that information for the $50 deposit. Once you have the, that up and open, you do all that through College Invest, which is a, um, a subcategory, Brendan, if you will, of the Department of Education with the state of Colorado. Uh, you will fill out the form through us just to confirm that you've opened it with your account number, but you don't need a social security number for us to get that $50 sent to your account. Where, where I was going with my question about bank accounts was, was just what you shared about the Elevations Credit Union. They're willing yep. to work with parents or grandparents to create accounts that don't have to have money in it to to create the 529 account and then you're notified and then the deposit gets made right um is this uh, uh josh is this limited to kids who are living inside the city limits of longmont no and, and that's that's a great question tim and i, I would i would just congratulate and, and really thank uh city council for longmont for agreeing to expand it beyond city limits you know um i I, I was born and raised here in Longmont, um, fourth generation Longmont citizen here, and we live here and we're pretty lucky. I might be a little biased, of course, but uh, it could have been very easy for Tim and, and city council to say, hey, you know, we're just going to keep it to our, our citizens here in Longmont. But Longmont's always been at the, the forefront, if you will, of doing things here in our local community. And, and we're really hoping as a committee here for 529 that it will encourage our other local communities, whether it be the Tri-Town area, Niwot Lions, whatever it may be, to really start moving forward with this. And so all you have to do is live within the St. Brain boundaries, the St. Brain Valley Schools boundaries, and be a kindergartner. That's all you need. 
And uh, you you can, and, and the other part of this too, is if you already have a 529 plan through College Invest, that's okay. Just let us know what your account number is. Remember your, your student has to be a current kindergartner. And, um, and I would also say too, that I, we've got a lot of questions from people saying, well, you know, I've got a second grader. Um, can I have access to the 50? Right now you can't because we've decided to keep it just to that kindergarten population. But you know, if you, if you want to open up a 529 for your second grader, do it. And it's, it's, again, it's very, very easy. We did it with our family and we're, we've been very, very happy with it. And with the growth of the stock market over the last couple of years, and we're, it's, it's pretty neat to see that go up, you know, yeah. to know that, that my, my children have the opportunity to have um, another source of, of revenue to help pay for some of that college. So if other, who knows what, who watches this, you know, right? the, hopefully the, the, the link on for, for, for this version of the backstory will become viral, right? It'll go by viral, or at least in Boulder County, it'll go viral. Uh, so if municipalities, right, if the other municipalities um, that are part of the St. Vrain Valley School District, you mentioned a couple, or uh, parents or grandparents within those areas or philanthropic organizations wanted to contribute here, how would they do that, Josh? Yeah, we have a donation page on our website at 529jump.org that you can go to and you can donate directly to the campaign. Uh, if, if you have questions, uh, you can reach out to me via our website. Um, if I don't have the answers, I'll, I'll connect with Bonnie or Brennan or uh, Jenny or Tim or anyone else on the committee, and uh, we can help with that. And I think the key is that we want to help our students right now uh, for the future. And then I think that for me, Tim, that's probably the difficult part of this is that 10, 15 years, it's a lot, it's really hard for us to focus on that because we're working on challenges and problems in the current, but we need to start making that deposit on the future so our students have opportunities. So if you are a city manager or if you're on a, on a council somewhere within the St. Brain Valley schools and, and you're interested, reach out to us and, and we'd be glad to chat with you. Bonnie, is it, is it, you suppose the Longmont City Council would appreciate other town councils, city councils uh, pitching in to help with this? You're, you're muted, Bonnie. <laughs> well, you can see me laugh. Of course. Yeah, I could. <laughs> they would, uh, they'd love to have participation with our other St. Rain Valley school um, cities. And uh, yeah. I, I think we just need to let them know and ask them. You know, in, in any nonprofit organization, all you have to do is ask. You just, you know, you just need to ask. And we haven't. We, we, that's one thing we need to do going forward is ask those cities to participate. So if there are any groups out there that are thinking about what should be the target of their fundraising campaign, <laughs> this 529 jump might get on their, on their uh, agenda, right? On the program, <laughs> one of the priorities. Yeah, anybody want to, anybody want to answer the question, where does the jump come from? Jump up. Oh, it's jump start. Aren't we jump starting? <laughs> There are 529 programs. So, all right. Who wants to have the last words here in this backstory? I don't know if I want the, the last word, but I would say that if you do donate to the foundation, we are a 51C3. It is uh, a tax uh, donation, uh, not a tax donation, but you can claim it on your taxes and, and tax we'll exempt. give you credit for that too. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Tax deductible. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I, and I think, and I just want to, again, the last word here, I don't know if it's the last word, but I want to commend. Uh, the council for uh, for city of Longmont for really stepping up. Um, we we have heard of other city councils throughout the nation who have done this. I believe, and I might be wrong here, Tim, but I believe Longmont is the first city council to do this within Colorado. And and I think it's just gonna it's gonna take a village for us to help. And you know we're not we're not talking just um, those folks who live in poverty. We're talking about everyone on every different income level, and and even for middle class families. College is be fast becoming uh, something that's going to be very, it's going to be a very big burden, financial burden on yeah. students. And it's easy to go to right now, CU uh, Boulder right now costs about $26,000 for one year, which includes room and board. And to think now in 2021, within four years, you can come out with a four year degree and have over $100,000 worth of debt is, is very, very scary for many yeah. families. And, and so I want to commend city council, Tim, and of course, Bonnie, congratulations. Bonnie, you want to, you, any, any last word from, from your city council perspective or any of the other hats you wear? Well, I just, I just want to say that uh, city council and the people of Longmont do believe in their kids. 
and we believe in that they can all be successful. We just need to give them a hand up. You know? All right. You know, I've done a bunch of backstories on different topics. None of them been any more fun than this one to do. So uh, I do appreciate, as I said at the outset, you all make huge contributions uh, to, the, to your communities, three of you in this one. And Brennan, I know that's true uh, where you live and, and obviously where you work and the, and the differences you make across the state. So thanks for all that. Thanks for your time this afternoon. And thanks for helping to, to share the backstory on the 529 Jump Program in Longmont, Colorado. Thank you, Tim.